of seesaw so far this season. Never really able to get it on a run, positive or negative. And the Marlies, who really had a dismal start to the year, couldn't put the puck in the nets, have really seen their fortunes change of late. Here's Dumont. He wants to create the opening goal, and he scores! Well, that didn't take very long, did it? Dumont has made it 1-0. Just picks up that puck at center ice, dances around the defenseman, Granberg. Right-handed shot coming on the right-hand side, and he just picks a spot to beat Antoine Bebo, and the Dogs captain scores the first goal of this hockey game, just 27 seconds. A great look here, beats him over the blocker's side. Top corner, up where we keep the cliches. <laughs> and for Dumont, that is goal number 10 of the year. Ties him for TJ Hanzik for second on the club. Becomes the third Bulldog to join double figures in goals as Charles Houdon and the aforementioned Hensick had already reached that plateau. But more importantly, it breaks things open here at first Ontario Center. 1-0 Hamilton Bulldogs. That's the game that needed a goal, 0-0 after two periods. Spencer Abbott down low, centers one out front, but Nylander wasn't looking love with a shot deflected wide. Centered out front, tipped away from Nylander. Mickelson all turned around and a potential break on for Hamilton. Carr and Hensick are away, but good recovery by the Marlies. And it gets cycled down low. And Draghetto forechecking on Love. Puck is picked up off the steal by TJ Hensick with a shot that goes just wide. Sven Andraghetto centers one out front and a chip shot for Bowman and he missed the net. Shot by Dietz, gloved by Bebo. And a little bit under siege, he'll hold on for a faceoff. You know, Friday night's been all right for Gabriel Dumont. He scored two goals in our broadcast last Friday night. A two to one win over the Grand Rapids Griffins and he's got one here so far. The only goal of the night, unassisted goal at 27 seconds. The fourth consecutive year, Norm, that Dumont has reached the double figure Plateau in goals. He has been a model of consistency for Hamilton. And he certainly seems to have embraced that captain's role here with the Dogs in that fourth season. Christian Get Thomas went the wrong way with that puck. Okay. Bowman looking for Thomas and McWilliam deflected the puck. Now McWilliam back with Matt Finn. Finn wasn't ready for that pass. Bowman center went out front. It was Picked off on the play by Ryan Rupert in with Connor Brown and Josh Levo. Rupert, drop pass, it was beyond Brown. Picked up by Thomas, quick reversal for Drayson Bowman. And Bowman is away all by himself right now. He goes right to the net, though, before getting cut off at the pass by Granberg. And offside is the end result as Sorkin gets shoved by Levo. We are 2.20 into period number three, one nothing Hamilton. Well, through 40 minutes of play, Savannah Andrighetto, who is our player to watch for the Hamilton Bulldogs, had five shots on goal to need all players so far tonight. And on the Marley side, both Brendan Mickelson and Ryan Rupert with three shots each to pace the Marleys. Charles Houdon and Daniel Carr also with three shots on goal for Hamilton. Hatterin, long shot easily turned aside by Bebo, Stuart Percy. Lead pass for Brandon Posen cutting through the middle. He'll shoot one in. Big Troy Bodie in on the forecheck. Good, solid hits on Greg Catterin and Bodie doing what he does best, joined by Kozen and... Now the Marlies have taken a penalty. <clears throat> See some palms up there. I'm wondering what that call is about, and uh, Coach Gordonine will not be happy about his team taking a penalty in the offensive zone on the cycle. Up 1-0, and it looks like it's Brandon Kozen who's going to take a seat again. The Dogs 0 for 4 so far tonight with the man advantage, Steve but with 10 shots on goal. So Kozen, originally a sixth round pick of the Los Angeles Kings to the penalty box. What an opportunity this is here for Hamilton. We'll see if they can get that offensive zone win and get themselves set up. Nope. And the last power play opportunity, Steve, once they gained the offensive zone for the last minute 20 or so, they had real strong possession. I thought you framed the question dramatically, but the answer in the end just wasn't to doesn't want the Bulldogs wanted on the clean faceoff win. Tip through. Hensick faking the slap shot. Carr scores! Well, TJ Hensick 
A wonderful setup, and Carr has made it 2-0 on the power play. Oh, big goal here for Hamilton to go up by two. Andy got a nifty play to keep possession in the neutral zone. And Hensek, a little slap fake. And Carr beats the Marlies forward to the back post to tap this one in and give the dogs a 2-0 lead. I think it was Carter Ashton who got beat perhaps on that back check. Didn't catch that number right away. And for Carr, that is goal number nine of the season for him. So both Carr and Andrew Ghetto sit on nine goals looking to join double figures where Dumont got his 10th tonight to join Hensick and Houdon, but more importantly, Norm, this one extends to a 2-0 lead for Hamilton and the power play. Boy, McWilliam really filled in the captain, Gabriel Dumont. Here's Charles Houdon. Houdon, Finley activated off the point. The big man rumbles in, gets hit by McWilliam. Just on the goal to TJ Hendrick, Hensick, sorry, and Greg Patteron. So Gabriel Dumont at 27 seconds, his 10th of the year, unassisted, made it 1-0 and now a 3-0-2. Daniel Carr is 9th of the year on the power play from Hensick and Patterin. And for Carr, that's his second power play goal of the year. Hensick now with 10 assists on the man advantage. Had some words exchanged. Dumont, who really got stapled hard earlier in the shift as part of things, Joe Finley having a chat with McWilliam. And you know, Finley is never too far away from the physicality, but how about Daniel Carr, Norm? I mean, this was a guy, he could score at the NCAA level at Union College, and another Bulldog, like Houdon, is having a fine rookie year. Yeah, off to a good start. His numbers certainly aren't as gaudy as Houdon, but he's making a good transition here in his first season as a pro. Won the Frozen Four last year with Union College, their first NCAA title. Allen off the faceoff. A three-time 20-goal scorer. Pretty At good when you, only, when you only play 47 games in the NCAA as well. Here's Matt Fratton. 33 AHL goals in 66 games. He could put the puck in the net at this level. Brandon Cozen takes a penalty for closing his hand on the puck in the offensive zone. That gives the dogs the man advantage and a 2-0 lead. I have to wonder if that penalty will come back to haunt the Marlies at the end of this night. Hatteran got belted by Carrick, who broke his stick, and Hatteran is injured on the play. Both gloves are off, helmet is off, blood on the ice, and Hatteran will make his way towards the bench under his own steam, but boy, he really got drilled. Here's a look at it here. As Patterson gets checked in from behind by Sam Carrick. And I wonder whether the glass or perhaps his stick, his own stick might have clipped him there off that hit. And there you see a look at what Greg Pattern has left behind on the ice. 2-0 to score here with 15.42 to go, and we're going to get the on-ice crew perhaps to effect some repairs. And that was Cozen's, or sorry, Carrick's stick that got broken, actually. Norm, we've seen some grisly scenes here at First Ontario Center the last two or three weeks yeah, to Nordy. Yeah, with um, and his fight. That uh, he went down hard. Here's Andre Padin. Thank you. He crystallized my thoughts. And Tenorti out of the lineup tonight, but he did play last Friday. And actually, I believe he played both games last weekend. We'll check that in a second. But you're right, Steve. Some grisly moments here at First Ontario Center these last couple of weeks. Yes, Tenorti did play last Saturday and had two assists in that game. And the on ice crew coming out here to assist in some cleanup work here. Dogs up 2 0. In a game, they're out shooting the Marlies 24-16 so far. 3-0 in the third period and shots on goal, and they've scored on two of them. And let's talk about a guy like Daniel Carr. Steve, you mentioned former NCAA player at Union College. Finishes off that feed from T.J. Hensick. And last Friday, we saw Coach Sylvain Lefebvre juggle those lines a little bit. Certainly our first look at seeing those rejig lines with Charles Houdon and Hensick again split up. That's, uh, you know... At least the second or third time, Steve, we've seen that. And Hensick gets to play with Daniel Carr tonight. As well as number 27, Sven Andergetto. Houdon with Dumont and Delarose. 
And uh, the new trios have seemed to work out pretty well as both of those lines have accounted here for a line tonight for a goal tonight. And the Toronto Marlies, who have scored the least amount of goals in the American Hockey League, though their goal average is slightly better than the Norfolk Admirals, who have two more goals but have played two more games, now have the task of coming up with a couple here as they trail the Bulldogs. Two nothing, two early goals by Hamilton, and they're looking for more. Look at Mason Hour chopped down at the blue line. Another penalty coming up against the Toronto Marlies, and the Hamilton Bulldogs will get their second power play of the period. Well, Maxi Mason Hour read that cross ice pass and then was off to the races. Intercepts that pass that I think might have been Josh Levo putting in a cross. And Stuart Percy has no choice here. He tried to play the puck, but he ends up taking down Mason Hour. So now Hamilton up 2 nothing has a chance to really put a stranglehold on this one if they can cash in on this man advantage opportunity. And you remember Maxi Mason Hour, Norm, signed a 25 game PTO. And all he's done, he's been the guest that won't leave, playing <laughs> in his 108th game for the Hamilton Bulldogs this evening. Sixth season as a pro. Tripping the call on Stuart Percy. So Hamilton, who converted on their last power play opportunity. Opportunity to really put some more distance between themselves and Toronto. Biggs is back, gave it away. Right to Darren Dietz with a shot. Bebo with a pad save. And Draghetto cycles, Carr back to the line. Houdon again playing the points. And Bodie, big man, got that long reach in there, knocked the puck out. He's got the puck back again, killing some valuable time before sweeping one in. Nice work by 6'4", 215, Troy Bodie. Yeah, useful forward on this Marlins team, Troy Bodie, assistant captain. Played 20 games with the Bulldogs back in 2006, 2007. Here's Mickelson. Carrick. Now Marley's thinking offense, shorthanded. Carrick, the trailer. Cozen waiting. Look at the move by Cozen, stopped by Condon. Well, Cozen has had some dynamite moments offensively. And a couple of his best chances are probably coming to penalty kill. Carrick almost with a steal. Sometimes, Norm, the risk of playing four forwards on a power play. And there was a pass by Houdon. The dogs have got some offensive zone pressure, and Houdon went to go cross ice, and Bodie picked it off, and they haven't really got set up in the offensive zone since. 30 seconds on the power play for Hamilton to work with. Hard pass for Thomas to handle. He's able to tip it in. Drisky and deep on the play. Bowman will shuffle one around. Back to the line it goes. Here's Mac Bennett. Gabriel Dumont at the point. Faking the shot, reverse one to Jarisky. Middle of the ice, not a shot away, it was deflected wide. 10 seconds on the Percy penalty, and McWilliam able to get it to McKagan. All sorts of trouble, stolen away by Dumont. Back it goes, hard shot by Jarisky, didn't miss the net by much. Penalty is over, Percy back on the ice. Good pressure by Hamilton though, back to the line. Bennett with a shot, that one was blocked smartly by Connor Brown, and he is away with Greg McKegg. Tail end of a penalty killing shift though. Jumping in is Matt Finney. Tried to softly backhand one through Condon and a pat save by the goaltender. Hamilton now one for six. Unofficially 12 shots on goal in their man advantage opportunities. Dumont will tip one in. Hamilton will change. Matt Finn. Matt Fratton lost it in the neutral zone. And Della Rose will drop it back for Allen. Here's Darren Dietz. The veteran Allen. Right through the middle, it was missed by Della Rose and Hamilton unable to change. 7-16 into the third period, it's 2-0 Bulldogs. And the Marlies find themselves down 2-0 in this third period. Two early goals by Hamilton, but they almost got themselves back into it in the shorthanded chance here. Brandon Cozen dancing in and has a good opportunity on Mike Condon. Why is he gets that puck on goal too? You know, sometimes you see in those penalty kill situations, the guy misses the net and rings it around, and next thing you know, there's an odd man rush going the other way. Mace now, Rupert on the draw. Love sends one down low in the direction of Connor Brown. Levo looking for a loose puck as well. Loose puck is collected by Maxine Masonauer. Gets a return feed from Dowell. Allen with a shot, and that one elevated in a hurry. Two on one coming back the other way. Levo, Connor Brown, Connor Brown, the all star waiting, shooting, hit the goal post, and Dietz calmly claimed the rebound and cleared the lines. And Josh Levo, another great feed to spring Connor Brown. And he had the goaltender beat, but couldn't beat the post. 
Shot in by Mason Hour. Dowell in on the forecheck. Love is back there. Rupert. Open ice for Abbott to work with. Love will jump into the rush. Nylander is trailing the play. Abbott turns back. And Nylander turned the wrong way, allowed it to roll for McKegg. Here's Sven Andragetto with the loose puck. Open ice to work with for the Swiss forward. Oh! And he hit Nylander with a lead pass. And they'll blow it down right there. 8-14 into the third period. We will get a break in the action.